My name is Dana Rizek. I'm a professor of medicine at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And my main research interest revolves around rare glomerular diseases, in particular IgA nephropathy. So I have been fortunate to be involved in several clinical trials testing new treatments for IgA nephropathy. So this is a very exciting time for our patients. So this is, uh, as you mentioned, a rare disease. It's estimated that it affects about 2.5 in 100,000 individuals. Uh, it typically affects young people. So the peak incidence of the disease is in the second and third decade of life. It is considered to be an autoimmune disorder. So uh, patients with the disease have uh, an immunoglobulin A, which we all have, but uh, what they have in high quantities in the blood is an immunoglobulin A that's lacking certain sugars that are supposed to be attached on the protein itself. And so the body recognizes that uh, to some extent as a foreign antigen and starts binding antibodies to it, forming immune complexes that ultimately sit in the kidneys and cause all sorts of inflammation and ultimately scarring and decline in kidney function. So the disease manifests as blood in the urine with protein sometimes, and um, ultimately, like I said, a decline in kidney function, so abnormal uh, blood tests that show a decline in kidney function. Uh, and we've known for a while that patients that spill protein tend to do worse. The more protein they spill, the worse the disease is going to be in terms of kidney outcomes over time. For the longest time, uh, you know, the patients were continued to be managed uh, with aggressive, what we call conservative management. And I'm not a fan of the term conservative because sometimes it sounds like we're not doing anything for patients and that's not the case. But we did not have disease specific treatment. So we could not address the autoimmune nature of the disease per se, uh, with the exception of giving people systemic steroids. So we focused a lot on treating them with medications that would lower their blood pressure to go, lower the amount of protein that they're spilling in the urine, uh, trying to uh, implement lifestyle modifications so that they have a healthier lifestyle, which again, we know preserves kidney function. If they smoke, we counsel them not to smoke, so on and so forth. And the guidelines recommend implementing all these interventions first and foremost for all patients. And then if patients continue to have a large amount of protein in the urine, putting them at risk of disease progression, then the guidelines uh, that were updated about three years ago now recommend patients are offered participation in a clinical trial. And that was, again, in the context of a lot of new therapies being tested in IgA. And if they didn't want to participate in a clinical trial or they didn't qualify for one, then they could be offered treatment with systemic steroids knowing that systemic steroids may benefit patients, but at the expense of quite a bit of adverse events. All these guidelines are likely to change and in fact are being updated. So what I tell you today and what I'll tell you in a few months may be different, but this is the current landscape. Uh, however, as new drugs have been tested and have proven to be beneficial, including now Fabhalta, all these guidelines will change to incorporate, again, ongoing discoveries, uh, and the treatment landscape will change quite a bit in the foreseeable future. We've known for some time now that the uh, part of the immune system known as the complement system is activated in the context of IgA nephropathy. Uh, and in particular, a part of the complement system known as the alternative complement cascade. So uh, the complement system has multiple arms, if you will, and the alternative complement cascade seems to be the um, most uh, prominent or the most involved in the pathogenesis of the disease and ultimately uh, leads to, again, activation of the immune system and decline in kidney function and so on and so forth. Uh, and so the idea uh, was that if we can inhibit the complement system, and in particular the part of the complement system that's most closely involved in IgA nephropathy, 
we could potentially uh, help patients and uh, delay the decline in kidney function and, you know, in the short term, reduce proteinuria. So Fabhalta is an oral medication. It is a specific factor B inhibitor. So it inhibits the alternative complement cascade. Uh, and the applause trial was the phase three pivotal trial that was going to see if Fabhalta given on top of the optimized standard of care that I just described could provide patients additional benefit by reducing proteinuria or the level of protein in the urine. And ultimately, uh, we want to make sure that it also saves patient uh, loss of kidney function. And, and those results are still pending. The kidney function type uh, part of the results are still pending. So knowing that IJ nephropathy kind of progresses over many, many years, it was initially quite challenging to design trials that would go on for a long period of time. And so to invest in a trial, not only money-wise, but from a patient's perspective, would have been uh, quite quite a challenge. So the FDA, in partnership with uh, the National Kidney Foundation, looked at the existing data. And as I mentioned, we had quite a bit of data suggesting that patients that had more protein in the urine tended to do worse long term. And importantly, that if you treated patients and were able to reduce the protein level in you were able to save kidney function downstream. So they came up with this proposal that they would allow a drug to receive accelerated approval based on uh, proteinuria outcomes. So if you can show that the drug reduces proteinuria, then the FDA would grant you an accelerated approval, meaning the drug can get you know, prescribed for patients while you're waiting on the final results of the trial, which ultimately are linked to the GFR, glomerular filtration rate, or kidney function uh, loss over time. Uh, but the expectation is that if you are able to reduce proteinuria enough, then chances are the drug will also translate into, taking the drug will translate into preserving kidney function down the line. So that's what we're talking about here. So this phase three trial, did show in the interim analysis that was a planned analysis that Fabhalta reduces the proteinuria uh, in patients with IgA nephropathy by about 44%. So a relative reduction compared to the placebo arm uh, of about 38%. And uh, that's quite significant uh, and hopefully will translate at the end of the two years so the, for the duration of the study into preservation of kidney function. So based on the proteinuria results, the FDA granted Fabhalta the accelerated approval. What that means for patients uh, and physicians that take care of them or providers in general uh, is huge. This is another, again, new therapy that was not available to these patients. It's a new mechanism of action. It's the first complement inhibitor that's approved for IgA nephropathy. Uh, so it will add to the armamentarium that's available for them to be treated. So this is tremendous news. I've been asked about the REMS program or the risk mitigation program. Uh, and maybe just a quick reminder that this is not peculiar to Fabhalta. So uh, any complement inhibitor, um, you know, there's a, an increased risk of uh, infection with specific organisms, uh, known as encapsulated organisms. So they all require vaccination prior to prescribing the drug. So again, this is not peculiar to Fabhalta per se, but to complement inhibitors in general. Um, so, you know, I've been asked, am I surprised by the REMS program or anything like that? No, it was kind of expected. I just want to remind uh, people where we were and where we're going with this disease. It's been an amazing uh, success story. So again, a shout out to you know sponsors that have been willing to invest in this disease state. Shout out to patients and families that are willing to participate in trials. And to see the field evolve so quickly in such a short period of time uh, is amazing. And I hope it will end up being a roadmap for other rare glomerular diseases uh, where we need, again, more research, more innovation, and more investment.